Hello everybody, welcome back to another video with Lim Reviews. Now today I'm super excited to share with you the in-depth differences between the Mi Pad 5 against the Mi Pad 5 Pro. Now both devices here look very similar in the devices itself, but there are quite a fair bit of differences that you should know between both devices here before making that purchase decision. So hopefully in this video, by the time you finish watching it, there is about 9 differences here that I want to cover between both devices and that will actually help you to make your purchase decision. Now before I begin, if you could support the channel by just giving a like or sub to the channel, that would be really awesome guys. Alright, so now let's start off with the video right away. The first thing you want to talk about very quickly here is the price. Now naturally, the Mi Pad 5 here starts off in China for RMB 2000 or if you're in Malaysia, that is approximately 1300 ringgit or 310 US dollars. Now over to the Pro, this is slightly more expensive naturally. It starts off in about 2500 RMB or 1600 ringgit or 380 US dollars. So between both devices, honestly speaking, the price difference is not much, but again, you are having quite a fair bit of differences here, so stick with me till the end of the video. Now, second thing you want to talk about here very quickly, and you can find it on the device itself, that is in the fingerprint scanner. So the non-pro version that I'm holding right here does not come with a fingerprint scanner, but this pro version here supports fingerprint scanner, so it is very easy to unlock and it's also more secure. Now, third thing you want to talk about here very quickly, and we can find it on the frame of this device here, and that is in the speakers. Now, you might already know that the non-pro version here comes with a four speaker setup, whereas the pro version on the other hand here comes with an eight speaker setup. But what you do not know here, however, is that the four speaker setup here is actually a little bit louder than the eight speaker setup on the pro. Strange, isn't it? However, hear me out. So although this is slightly louder, what the 8 speaker setup is able to do on the Pro here is actually it provides a more surround sound, a richer sound that comes out from this device itself. So again, if you appreciate better audio quality, go for the 8 speaker setup right here. But honestly speaking, between both devices, if you do not put them side by side, you will not even hear the difference. It's that good. Alright, now let's move on very quickly to the fourth point right here and that is in the camera itself. Now notice that the design of the camera layout is exactly the same as the Pro and to be honest, it's very hard to see it, but on the non-pro version, there is only one single sensor right here. It is a 13 megapixel sensor. However, on the pro, you have an additional five megapixel depth sensor, and this can actually help you out in terms of your depth images, portrait shots, as well as possibly AR applications. However, one thing you do need to know as well, on the front here, both devices have the same eight megapixel selfie camera. So that's just in terms of the camera differences. Now very quickly, let's move on to the fifth point right here, and I have to unlock this display here to talk about it very quickly. This is actually not really a difference, but a similarity between both devices here, and the display on both devices here are 10.95 inches, they're both LCD displays, and they're both running at 2.5K. However, the more important thing you need to know about these devices, the displays here, is that both devices actually run at 120Hz refresh rate, and they both support the wide VIN L1. So if you're watching on Netflix and you want to watch that in HD, you can do so on both devices. No need to worry about that. Another thing you need to know here is that both devices also support HDR10, Dolby Vision. So honestly speaking, both devices here have great displays and I've enjoyed it throughout my entire use. Now very quickly, let's move on to the next point. The sixth point right here, we're going to talk a little bit about the performance. So naturally, this pro version here is slightly more powerful. It comes with the Snapdragon 870, but the non-pro version here is not lagging behind. It comes with the Snapdragon 860. However, benchmarks are benchmarks and I did a comparison between both devices here and Noticeably, the 870 here had a 30% higher single core score as well as a 20% higher multi-core score. So that's just for you benchmark fans out there. But in terms of day-to-day -day use, they're actually very similar. App launch speeds are very similar as well. It's only about a split second slower on the Mi Pad 5, the non-pro version. So again, just in terms of performance, daily performance, you won't find much of a difference. But if you are a gamer, you will definitely appreciate that slightly better processor on this Leo Pro right here. Now let's move on to the seventh point. Very quickly, we'll talk about the RAM. Now most of the times we don't talk about RAM, but in this case, there is a difference between both devices. The non-pro version here comes with 6GB of RAM, but it is LPDDR4X. Now the pro version here also comes with 6GB of RAM, but it is LPDDR5. So what does that mean? Well, basically, an improvement in RAM basically shows that a slightly faster transfer speed and better efficiency. So that's what you can expect in terms of the RAM of the pro right here. Now in terms of internal memory, both are 128 gigabytes. They're both UFS 3.1, so no complaints about that whatsoever. Okay, now let's move very quickly to the eight point here, and that is the battery in these devices here. 
Now, the non-pro version comes with a slightly larger battery, bear that in mind, it comes with a 8720mAh battery and it supports 33 watt fast charge. Impressive? Well, the pro version here is even better. It does come with a smaller battery though, only 8600mAh but significantly faster charging speeds at 67 watt fast charge. So if you appreciate those faster charging speeds, you're always on the run and you need fast charging speeds, uh, the 67 watt fast charge here will not disappoint you. Alright guys, now on to the final one, the nine differences here. And again, this is not something that you can see on the devices itself. This is the connectivity test. Now in terms of connectivity, it supports here on the non-pro version, Bluetooth 5.0 but on the Pro, it supports Bluetooth 5.2. So what that means is probably lesser latency and slightly wider range, but honestly speaking, again, in day-to-day -day use, there is not much difference that I felt. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk here about is the Wi-Fi speeds. This supports Wi-Fi 5, and this supports Wi-Fi 6. However, again, I did a speed test for both devices here in my room, and the speeds are actually very identical. So again, if you're taking the non-Pro version, you're not missing out on much. Now, Last but not least, and this is nothing to do with a difference, but this is a similarity between the non-pro as well as the pro, three items you need to take note of. First up, both devices here do not come with a headphone jack, so for all you headphone lovers out there, you have to rely on Bluetooth. Second point here, both devices here do not have haptic engines, so you will not feel any vibrations in the devices, very standard stuff on tablets these days. And final point here, both devices here do not support video out. So even if you have like a HDMI or Type-C, a connector, you will not be able to extend your display to an external monitor, for example, like this right here. You will not be able to do that. So those are what you need to know. All right, guys, if you stayed on to the end, I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something between the comparison between the Mi Pad 5 as well as the Mi Pad 5 Pro. Once again, if you do like this video and yeah, please support the channel by giving it a thumbs up, sub to the channel. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. And to all my Malaysian friends out there, Selamat Hari Merdeka. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.